हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर स्नेहा सागर फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल केमिस्ट्री एल जे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मेसी आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दी मूक लेक्चर सीरीज इनिशिएटेड बाय एल जे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मेसी सो टुडे इन दिस मूक लेक्चर सीरीज वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ अवर न्यू चैप्टर ऑफ सेमेस्टर वन इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री दैट इज एसिड्स बेसिस एंड बफर्स so now we'll start with the different theories of acids and bases so uh, earlier concepts of is acid and base indicates that any compound or any chemical which has sour taste is known as acid and which turns blue litmus into the red whereas a base is defined as any chemical or substance which has bitter taste and which turns red litmus into the blue so now uh, we have arrhenius concept for acids and bases so according to arrhenius acid is defined as any hydrogen containing substance which gives h plus ion in aqueous solution so according to arrhenius hcl can liberate h plus ion in the aqueous solution so it is known as acid and base is defined as any chemical which can liberate oh minus ions in presence of aqueous solution so here naoh can liberate oh minus ions with the presence of water so it is known as base so uh, there are certain limitations of arrhenius theory because arrhenius theory is limited to the aqueous solutions only uh, this uh, characteristic of alcl3 and ammonia cannot be explained by the theory next theory for acids and bases is bronsted lorry theory or we can say proton donor acceptor concept so in this particular concept acid is defined as any hydrogen containing material which is capable of donating protons to the other substances for example hcl can donate h plus ion to the other substances and as per this theory base is defined as any chemical which accept h plus from any other substances so in this particular uh, concept oh minus has tendency to accept h plus ion and it can form water so oh minus is termed as base as per this theory so theory of uh, conjugate acid and bases can be explained by a uh, bronsted and lorry concept so one of the limitations of bronsted lorry concept as is uh, it cannot uh, define certain characteristics of alcl3 as well as some uh, other acids and bases because it uh, only depends on the proton transfer reactions but some acids or some bases they are not participating in the proton transfer reaction so this is the limitation of bronsted and lorry theory now next one concept is levis concept or electron donor acceptor concept so according to levis an acid is defined as any species which accept the electron pair whereas base is defined as any species that can donate an electron pair so according to levis uh, we have h plus ion and we have nh3 ammonia in that uh, nitrogen is having lone pair of electron which can be donated to the h plus ions so here in this case ammonia is termed as base whereas h plus is termed as acid certain examples of lavis acids and lavis bases are uh, mentioned in this slide so uh, limitations of lavis concept is that lavis acid and bases cannot be arranged in their order of strength because it depends on the reaction type and due to involvement of electrons in lavis acids and bases uh, the reactions are assumed to be very fast but some lavis base reactions are very slow uh, next is pharmaceutical importance of acids and bases so acids and bases are generally used in the preparation of different salts they are used in analytical laboratories uh, they are also used in maintaining the ph of git urine blood and other body fluids they are also useful in the uh, preparation of the buffers because buffers as you all know that buffers are 
uh, these substances or solution which are able to resist the changes in the pH. Uh, buffer is generally made up of a mixture of weak acid and its salts or weak base and its salts. Generally, there are two types of buffers, acidic buffers and basic buffers. So, acidic buffers are made up of weak acid and its salt, whereas basic buffers are made up of weak base and their salt. So, properties of buffers are like uh, they are having the pH which, is, uh, remain, which remains constant. Uh, the pH of the solution cannot change on the dilution. Uh, the pH cannot change even after the addition of small amount of acid or base. And uh, the pH of the solution remains constant which is useful in many chemical reactions. And uh, the pH of the solution cannot change uh, by keeping it for long time. So, these are some properties of the buffer solution. Next, we have some buffer equations or uh, we can uh, term it as buffer action which is generally calculated by using Henderson Hasselbatch equation. So here in this case we are taking HA as acid and uh, various uh, steps of reactions, uh, various uh, steps are uh, performed in order to get uh, the uh, final equation and our final equation for uh, determining the pH value is pH is equal to pKa plus log of A minus divided by HA or we can term uh, it as pH is equal to pKa plus log of conjugate base divided by the acids. So after a certain derivation we can get this buffer equation. Also we can get the buffer equation for the alkaline buffer in that we are taking BUH as base and it can liberate B plus and OH minus ion on the equilibrium. So here also we are getting uh, one of the equation that is pH is equal to 14 minus pKb plus log of B plus divided by BUH. It can also be termed it as pH is equal to 14 minus pKb plus log of conjugated acid divided by base. So, uh, by derivation of these two equations, we are getting the values of pH. Uh, next concept is a buffer capacity or buffer index or buffer value or buffer efficiency. So, this buffer efficiency is efficiency of a buffer to resist the changes in pH, this which is also called as buffer capacity beta. Uh, by definition, if we want to say that buffer capacity is defined as the amount of strong acid or base in gram equivalents or moles, which must be added to the 1 liter of the buffer solution to change its pH by 1 unit. So, it can be defined or it can be uh, term it as beta is equal to delta B divided by delta pH and there are certain factors that affect the buffer capacity is ratio of salt to the acid and base and the total buffer concentration. Uh, so uh, this uh, buffer capacity can be explained by uh, examples of the buffer solution of acetic acid and sodium acetate and NH4OH and NH4Cl. Uh, next, we have certain criteria for selection of buffers. Like buffers can be having adequate buffer capacity, it should be having high purity, it should be water soluble, stable, it should not be toxic, it should not absorb light and it should be inert and safe in nature. Next, we have certain buffers in pharmaceutical system. Uh, they are like standard buffer solutions. Uh, in that, we have certain preparations for uh, the buffer solutions, how to prepare buffer solutions. Uh, we have certain examples of acetic acid, sodium acetate and NH4OH and NH4Cl. Then we have uh, certain examples of standard buffer solution and their method of preparation. I am not going to tell each procedure for preparation of standard buffer solution, but you should know the uh, names and uh, their pH range like hydrochloric acid buffer, pH is between 1.2 to 2.2, acidic phthalate buffer, pH is between 2.2 to 
to 4. Neutralized phthalate buffer, pH value is 4.2 to 5.8. Then we have phosphate buffer that is pH value is 5.8 to 8. And there are certain disadvantages of uh, some of the standard buffer solutions also. So uh, next we have uh, factors affecting shootable buffers. We have chemical factors also. We have pharmacological factors also. In chemical factors, uh, we can say that buffer should be safe and inert. It cannot, it should not participate in any reactions like oxidation, reaction. It should not form complexes. It is soluble. So these are certain chemical factors and also some of the pharmacological factors like toxicity should not be there for the buffer or even it cannot uh, participate in the pharmacological action. It cannot increase or decrease the action, pharmacological action of the main API. Next, we have role of buffers in pharmacy. How we are using uh, this buffers in pharmacy uh, because it is generally used for the solubility purpose for uh, the color because certain dyes are um, acting uh, as certain pH so color of this particular dye is important than stability of redox reactions then stability of some compounds are also maintained at the certain pH then patient comfort and optimum pH conditions for active medicinal compounds can be achieved by using the buffers. So these are the applications or role of the buffers in pharmacy. Next we have stability of buffer. Uh, so generally shelf life of the uh, buffer uh, is within uh, 1.5 to 2 years. So uh, we should check uh, this shelf life. Uh, then we should check the expiration, uh, expiration date. Uh, we should uh, store this buffer at room temperature or we can refrigerate it as per the requirements. We should check the labeling of all these buffers. So stability and storage of buffer is very important criteria. Next, we have the uh, most interesting topic that is buffered isotonic solutions. So it depends generally on the osmosis reactions. We all know that osmosis is uh, the uh, liberation of uh, low concentration of the uh, solvent into the uh, higher concentration of uh, solute. So low solute water molecule is transferred from low solute concentration to the high solute concentration. So if this particular isotonicity is not maintained in our pharmaceutical solutions then it can lead to bursting of the RBCs or even it can lead to hemolysis. So that is very critical case. So we should maintain the buffer isotonicity. So measurement of isotonicity of buffers can be done by hemolytic method or cryoscopic method. In that we have certain classes of methods like class 1 method that is uh, freezing point depression method. We have cryoscopic method. In that we have an equation uh, percentage weight is equal to 0 0.52 minus A divided by B. Next we have a uh, sodium chloride equivalent method in that one equation is that uh, W is equal to 0 0.9 minus drug percentage into E of NaCl. Then we have class 2 methods uh, which is also known as white Vincent method. Here the isotonicity is uh, maintained by the addition of water. So V uh, volume of water can be calculated by this equation V is equal to W into E of NaCl into 111.1. Uh, Next is class 3 method. Uh, it is also known as L iso method. Here also uh, E NaCl can be calculated from this equation like 17 of L iso divided by molecular weight of the drug. Uh, so this, are, this is about the uh, buffers, uh, its introduction, its role in pharmacy and different isotonicity examples. So here are some of the FAQs which is asked in your GTO examination like explain acid-base theories with limitations, what are buffers, 
explain buffer capacity derive Henderson Hasselbalch equation for buffers what are pharmaceutical buffers to discuss its applications and write down short note on calculations and methods of adjusting isotonicity so these are the references i have referred for uh, preparation of this presentation so thank you everyone for watching this video please do subscribe our youtube channel pharma ignite thank you everyone